Hi folks, welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. Sitting next to me is a truck that by now I actually don't think it needs much of an introduction. This is the brand new all-electric F-150 Lightning. And in this video, we're gonna test it in just about every way that we can. We're gonna drive off-road in some deep snow, we're gonna hook up a 7,000 pound trailer, and then we're gonna plug in a ton of electronics from my house to see just how many things can this truck run. Make sure you stay tuned. Let's start with a walk around and normally I would show you the engine and tell you the specs but of course there is no engine here. In the front of this F-150 Lightning you get this massive frunk. You could put 400 pounds of payload in there along with uh, its 400 liters, that's how big it is. And there's some plugs in there and we'll get to those in just a little bit. So the truck you're looking at here is the F-150 Platinum and when you get this Lightning you only really get two choices for powertrain, the standard battery or the extended range battery and there's a lot of numbers involved so I'm going to throw them all up right here. You can see first of all the range difference and then right here you can see the power differences. So the torque stays the same but when you get that extended range battery the horsepower goes way up. Now this Platinum model this thing is top of the line which means it gets extended range battery as standard equipment. It also gets all of the options including some nice 22 inch wheels, a couple different unique styling things like those Platinum badges and here in Canada this truck has a starting MSRP of $120,000, so it will not come cheap. Talking about not cheap, I also wanna show you how much the extended range battery is. So here on this Lariat in Canada, you're talking about $18,000 on the XLT, about 15 grand Canadian. In the US, on the Lariat model, going extended range will cost you about 11 grand, while on the XLT, you're looking at closer to $17,000. We wanted to show off how much stuff the Ford Lightning could actually power because Ford says this will do 9.6 kilowatts over 11 outlets in the truck, including a 240 volt outlet here in the bed. So we raided Steve's garage and his kitchen to find some stuff that had all kinds of draws and you'll be able to see on the screen exactly what we're looking at. So radiant heater that keeps us toasty in there. We're gonna go full bore on that guy. Should be able to see that running. Lights already on. I'm gonna crank up our fan here because you know we had to warm up outside, now we have to cool off outside. Fans on high and uh, you know we're at the job site today so reciprocating saw. I'm gonna run that for 10 seconds just to see the draw. I'm cutting things. <laughs> just to see the draw but four things, nothing blew up yet. Let's come on around to the front where we've got a little uh, comfort station set up for ourselves here. And by comfort, I simply mean we're going to go ahead and fire up our electric kettle and get our coffee ready for this job today. And then, uh, you know, I was running late this morning, so I didn't really have a chance to dry my hair this morning. So I thought, yeah, I'll quick give myself a dry here on the job site. Beyond that, a little trickle charger for my 12 volt battery. And we're running everything on high here. Let's go see what we see inside. Yeah, so we're running all that stuff and still mad it's not drawing that much power. You could 3200 watts total. You could still run a lot more. We have a ton of power left. Well, kettle's boiled. So we're going to pour our hot chocolate here and then uh, let's hop in and go for a drive. Alrighty folks, little situation report. So as you can see, the F-150 Lightning's out there at the road. We didn't know how much snow was gonna be here. Well, it turns out there's a bunch of snow. So we busted out the snowblower and then we busted, then we busted the, the snowblower. <laughs> 
Well, yeah, we got this new blower for our tractor. And actually, Dad, to be fair, we didn't really break it. It has a couple of shear pins, and, well, they sheared off. They sheared, and partly it's because this snow is so wet yeah. and heavy. This stuff is just... It's like wet concrete. Well, it's, it's been raining all morning. It's two degrees Celsius, so just above freezing. It's full of water. So yeah, and what we are trying to do, folks, is get to our trailers right there to at least be able to tow our 7,000 pounds. And uh, so yeah, to be able to do that, we need to go do some snowblower repair. Okay, folks, we should be back in business. Hello. Okay, good luck. And there goes the tractor, and here's the finished yard. We plowed out the trailer, the truck ramp, and a path over to the shop. So now, after all that work, we can finally get started filming. <laughs> And here comes our little snow test, ladies and gentlemen. So I've got it in off-road mode. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and lock that rear differential. Uh, drive modes. Rear diff is locked. So let's see if I can deal with the snow. This is about 8 inches of snow, but it's also heavy, wet snow. So diving in. Come on, Ford. you look at that so this is also a set of michelin x ice tires very important when you're driving in the the white stuff but the the lightning just plowed through that snow like it was nothing and you know what it's heavy this truck and you can just feel it plus not just the fact that it's heavy but the weight distribution we're used to classic pickup trucks where all the weight is in the front and you get no weight over your rear axle so of course with those trucks you needed four-wheel drive and this has it as well but here you get a much more closely split 50 50 weight distribution all of the weight is down low in the floor and all of that helps to make it a pretty nice dang good vehicle coming through snow like that Now, thanks to our handy dandy truck ramp, I can show you underneath the lightning and we start at the nose. There are two nice exposed tow hooks. I like that. Now moving back, we get to something totally different. We get to this grate. Now this is a piece of just material. It's not actually metal. And up in there, you'll see there's a fan and a radiator. So I'm guessing this is cooling for the front motor and it's actually pulling in most of its air from underneath the truck up here in the front. That's something that, uh, you're definitely not going to see on an ICE vehicle and is unique to this electric F-150 Lightning. Now moving back, we get to the very first skid plate and we will do our handy dandy magnet test. If the magnet sticks, it's steel, not aluminum, and look at that, it sticks. Go to the next one, it sticks. Next one, it sticks. Next one, it sticks. And I can tell you, I went all the way back. Every single one of these skid plates is made from steel. Now, one thing I want to show you, because we are out here in the snow today, there's a lot of edges on these skid plates, and actually they end up kind of shoveling snow. Look at all the snow that's collected up here already, and the snow that's on some of these obviously important looking connectors. Now, I don't know if that's dangerous or not, but it just doesn't look good having the elements kind of right up in there. And these skid plates, yeah, they have these lips on them, and like I said, in the deep snow, basically just act as shovels. Now, you can see, the battery pack starts right here. So you have one, two, three skid plates. That's all battery pack. And then at the back end, you actually get another skid plate and you get a full size spare tire. I'll show you that now. What really strikes me at the rear end, look how big the rear control arms are here. They're just absolutely massive castings. And that's not the same as what you're gonna find on a standard F-150. And that's gotta be there just to support the weight of that battery and that rear motor. So now we're hooking up our trailer and I can show you the cameras. So we get that top down view and then you get your rear view 
You also get the plus there, so you're able to zoom in right onto your hitch. I like that as well. We'll turn off the parking sensors. And then once you get close, you can zoom in. Cool. And there it is. Now I should also show you, you can hit this button here and get the rest of the views. So that's just your rear. Now back up. That's your split wide rear. Coming back. Yep. Perfect. That's a view down into your bed and you can zoom in there. Good for checking on your cargo or for hitching up a fifth wheel or a gooseneck. Next, you get over to the trailer reverse guidance system. This is gonna help you back up your trailer and help you back up to your trailer. And finally, you get that auxiliary camera, which you can put, well, wherever you want, on the back or even inside your trailer. Okay, folks, now what I wanna measure now is the tongue weight, and you can do that using the smart hitch. So, we're all good there. We got our trailer. You can run through this connection checklist. So here we're going to reset the weight because we have the trailer weight off the truck. Trailer is disconnected. Yes. Next. Enter total weight of the loaded trailer. I'm going to call it 3,100. Okay. okay, now you can drop it on. Uh, it tells you to connect the lights. Okay, that's good. We got that. Ensure lights are functioning. They are not on our trailer. <laughs> Raise the tongue jack, and there we go. Weight on the hitch is within the recommended range. So basically it already knows that 10 to 15% of the, the weight that I entered is right there, and it's telling us that our tongue weight is 465 kilograms. That's neat. And now folks, here we are driving in the F-150 Lightning. So right off the bat, we're gonna just try to split up this review sort of into two different parts. So the first part is what we talk about most of the time, which is the performance of the vehicle, how exactly it towed, what it did when we just drove through the snow and put a trailer on the back. Yep. And then the second thing we'll get into is the more of the ownership experience at large, talking about charging, public charging, all of that stuff, which I think everyone already knows is a bit of a pain. So we'll get to that stuff in a second, but Dad, let's just start off with straight up how the Lightning did today. So we put our 7,000 pounds on the back. Uh, first of all, it managed to pull that 7,000 pounds out of the snow, even though the fenders were dragging through the snow banks. So that was good. And then once we got out on the road, uh, what did you feel when we had the trailer on? It tows better than most trucks out there because it's, it's, it's dead level and the way that it's sprung, it's already carrying so much weight. The back end doesn't say when you drop the tongue onto it. And then the actual, I mean, the way that the power comes on is so even and linear. I mean, all the things that we've been used to talking about over the years, like, like turbo lag and, you know, the torque range, none of that applies anymore. None. This thing goes like this. Zoop. And, and, and whether you're at the bottom end of it or you get your foot right into it, it's moving in that linear fashion. Yeah, it's For almost that reason and all of them, man. It's a great tow vehicle. It, it's almost crazier. Like going zero to 60 is wild, but going 60 to 100 is really wild. Because when you put your foot to the floor going 60, you still feel like you have that rush of acceleration, which of course in a regular ICE truck, you would have to have a big downshift. You'd wait for that. You'd feel all the gears doing something. You're right. You have none of that stuff. Power delivery is smooth. And I actually forgot the trailer was back there, to be honest. Now, I think we should say that we're in a platinum here today. So the tow rating on this truck, Dad, is 8,500 pounds. The max tow rating for the Lightning is up to 10,000 pounds if you went for a lower trim. So we're only at 8,500, but yeah, you know, I would tow that 7,000 pound trailer with this truck all day long and not even think about it. Yeah, and we have no idea how much slush was weighing on there today. Yeah, it was adding to it for sure. One thing I just want to mention here right now is, again, these things that we have to get used to as electric vehicles come on. Because there's no engine noise in here, because there's no pitch or whine, um, I'm speeding all the time because this thing is virtually silent. 
and that sort of sound that I'm always used to back here the kind of without looking at the speedometer I know roughly how fast I'm going I got no clue in this thing I'm constantly looking down and going man I'm I'm going way too fast so it's a whole new experience because of how quiet these electric trucks are yeah and, and it speaks to not only the fact that there's no engine but yeah just how quiet they've made these cabins and and it's almost a funny thing it almost works backwards where it's so quiet that any noise you do here is almost amplified like I really pay attention to the wind and the tire noise in here and I know it's quieter than every other truck but I can hear it more clearly than in any other truck as well uh, but it, that's something I think you get used to really quickly dad is, is how quiet it is and I kind of like it I like a V8 roar too don't get me wrong but uh, every now and then a nice silent truck, that's nice, man. And also I'll just touch on towing features. They're all here, just like you would expect in a regular F-150. An integrated trailer brake controller, pro trailer assist, the backup control. Uh, we have a full suite of cameras that'll zoom in on your hitch ball and help you hook up. Um, you also get that new auxiliary camera, Dad, that you can stick on the back of your trailer or inside your trailer. So once again, we'll probably touch on this again, but. Ford didn't take away any of the functionality of the regular F-150. They brought over all that stuff that already works great, and they made sure that it was here in the Lightning. No, absolutely. So, I mean, towing, check mark. Totally. It works well. So, folks, we just ran our towing loop. We did 41 kilometers, and you can see right there we averaged 54 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, and the truck will also show you there exactly where the power was going to during our drive. So, I mean, it didn't double, but considering we were getting closer to uh, between 35 and 40 when the truck was empty, 54 is definitely a significant jump with just our 7,000 pound trailer. Although I'll also point out, Dad, that it's just an open flat deck trailer. It's not like it's a... Uh, we're not towing a travel trailer. It's not a travel trailer or something Agreed. with big tall walls on it. But still, good to know okay. that that's how much our consumption went up. And with that trailering number in mind, let's dig into the range a little bit on this truck. So first of all, the best range that we saw in our entire week with the F-150 Lightning was 301 kilometers, and that was at 90% charge. Now the week we had the truck, it was hovering around zero degrees Celsius, so the heater was definitely on, but it wasn't even that cold. In order to achieve the 300 kilometers of range, we were running between 35 and 40 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers when the truck was empty. But as you already saw, once we put our trailer on, consumption jumped up to 54 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So if we take our 131 kilowatt hour battery pack and we divide that by 54, multiply by 100 for 100 kilometers, we end up with 242 kilometers of range when we are towing that trailer. I do appreciate that the F-150 Lightning tells you where the power is going, and you can see here that most of the power, of course, goes towards driving, but 15% of the power used was going towards heating us in the cabin and keeping the battery at the optimal temperature. We'll talk about the charging experience in a minute because my dad definitely has a lot to say, but we'll start with just charge times. So we pulled into a DC fast charger from Electrify Canada at 53% battery, and you can see right here from this end screen, it took us 40 minutes to get up to 90%, and at 57 cents a minute, that cost us $22.80 Canadian. At that fast charger, we were being delivered between 110 and 115 kilowatts of power at any one time. Now, just up the road, we pulled in to get a little bit of a top up, but there was only one charger available. This was a flow charger, and it could only put out 50 kilowatts. So at 50 kilowatts, it took us about 27 minutes to go from 79% back up to 90% charged. Our entire test day with the F-150 Lightning was filled with planning based on where we could charge out there on the roads. Now, I reached out to Ford Canada to get some statistics, and the one that stands out to me is that 
80% of F-150 Lightning charging happens at home according to their stats. So the majority of people buying EVs today, they know that they're only ever going to charge at home and they're not going to do long road trips because very likely when it comes time to do over 300 kilometers, they're going to hop into their second vehicle, which is gasoline powered. And our experience with public charging kind of drives this home. It's really annoying to have to constantly be planning which charger you're going to hope that the charger works properly first of all and then in our case there was only one charger in the whole town that we were in and it was just a 50 kilowatt so then you're also at the mercy of how much energy can be delivered to you public charging is not ideal just yet the infrastructure is getting better but i think if you're considering an ev today you better do it knowing that most of your charging will happen at home so this morning i drove from my house almost to steven's house which is approximately 90 kilometers and 50 miles anyway we wanted to be topped right up before we continued north up to ironwood so i went to a uh what do you call it supercharger fast, fast charger. charger fast charger okay so i'm telling you this story as a novice all right and a lot of what i'm going to tell you people that already are doing this are gonna say that i'm just carrying on but the fact of the matter is is that i got to the charger and it is not simple it is not simple at all you have to download their app you can't just go up there and plug it in and then pay for it you have to use their app and for then you got to find it then you got to download it then you got to insert your credit card information because again it had a tap feature but it wasn't working so then i had to sign up for a membership which i still don't understand and then finally plug it in and get started not to mention it took me five attempts to get a good connection now was that me or the design i'll say half and half point being is that from the time i parked in front of the charger till the time i actually started charging 30 minutes so now that i got the app yada 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 should be simple the next time around but you know what it shouldn't be that difficult and i know it's still early days but a lot of these companies i don't know who they've got figuring out how these things should work but you know what to this day a gas station is dead simple i can go in there i can tap i can pay with a credit card i can pay with a debit card i can walk in and pay with cash <laughs> okay i mean i should have those options and it should be as dead simple as pumping gas because if you make it really really complicated guys like me are going to get really pissed off and for that reason alone I won't buy this truck and you know what that's fair and I'm actually gonna back you up here I'm not just gonna make fun of you I'm not just gonna call you an old man because I was frustrated about it as well because like you said you look at the gas station experience why couldn't we just replicate that and bring it over to EVs I love apps if the app is appropriate and it works well I think it's absolutely a great idea to have an app why do I need an app in this case all I need to know is how much electricity did you sell me and how much do I have to pay you for it exactly That's a simple dead simple transaction and and yeah I couldn't agree more and then dad of course the next thing is standardization because the first charger you're talking about that was an electrify Canada charger and then we went further up the road and we wanted to top up again to be safe and then we went to a flow charger. Why did we go to a flow charger? Because it was the only one available. Yeah, completely different readouts, completely yeah. different setup. Again, you're standing there going, okay, how does this one work? Yeah, different app. And again, to be fair to flow, that app was really simple. I figured it out in no time flat. But yeah, why do I have to suddenly get something new from a different company? Their pricing structure is gonna be different. I think that we will get to a point. You said it, it's early days. I think the standardization of this should happen in, um, but we're just we're not there yet it's kind of the wild west every one of these charging companies is doing whatever they want however they want and right now we're still at their mercy you know what it's even small things right like so over the charging station they got these tiny little like 10 by 8 foot roofs slanted roofs which basically protect the charger but i was standing there getting rained on this morning mm -hmm. right at a gas station i'm completely covered 
Yeah. All right? Like, we figured out these little things. You have to make it a convenience. The other thing, too, is I'm standing there. I got all the time in the world. There's no garbage can for me to clean out my vehicle. There's no brush for me to wash my windshield. There's no, there's there's nothing there that normally I would expect at a gas station. They don't sell wiper fluid. You know, it's, they really haven't thought a lot about this yet. No, all of those things make sense. And actually the one that, the one company that has thought is Petro Canada because they're actually installing chargers at their gas stations and that solves all of your issues, right? Frankly, that's the only place they should be because then you can glom onto all the services exactly. that are available at the gas station yeah so for example the two chargers we went to they were in Canadian tire parking lots yeah. I, don't, I don't know if Canadian tire had to pay for that or if they just chose Canadian tire but it's like yeah if you would want something at Canadian tire great if you don't well that's where you're stuck yeah Canadian like you said tire. this morning we we're sitting there and you're going do I need furnace filters I guess I might as well go get them because <laughs> we had a half an hour to kill exactly so yeah, there. This, these are the pain points that are just a reality with owning an electric vehicle today. I think they're going to get easier and easier. And that if you bought this truck, you would get a charger installed at home, and hopefully you wouldn't have to public charge that much. That's sort of the thinking. But you know what? At the end of the day, Look, sometimes you'll need to if you're going far. And well, they depends, need to make it depends better. on who you are. And there's no doubt that for most people who got a nine to five gig you know you're going to be doing the same sort of route every day i get that but you know actually we're the worst example because we're you know out in the breeze we're going here going there we travel a lot yeah all over the place yeah and so every single trip is going to be me going well where am i going can i get there and more importantly, where am I going to charge when I do get there? And then, then, of course, don't even think about plugging one of these into a regular 120 volt plug. It's just yeah, useless. Basically. Yeah, it's like three days to charge it up. Yeah, so don't even think about that. You have to get the charger installed. So anyway, what's the point of all that? It gives you a whole nother dimension to the ownership experience, which right now you don't have with a gasoline powered vehicle for the simple reason that that infrastructure is 100 years old, it exists, it's everywhere, and you just don't think about it. It's just there when you want it. So eventually, I'm sure we're gonna get there with this too, but you have gotta be aware of the frustrations that come with this purchase today. Well, folks, we have come to the end of this video. Now, you know what? Something that my dad said to me yesterday really kind of struck me. He said this after our day of testing. He said, you know what? I've never been more conflicted about a pickup truck in my entire life. And it's basically how I feel too. As a product, as a tow vehicle, going off-road in the snow, the F-150 Lightning is incredible. You just have to be ready to put up with some of those pain points when it comes to public charging and just charging in general. But if you're ready to live with that, this is one hell of a truck. So folks, that's it for this video. Now, of course, I need to hear what you think. So go below into the comments. Let me know what you think of the Lightning. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come back here to Truck King to see what we are testing next. See ya.